Good day everyone. This is the Sunday School Hour of Forlinid Baptist Church and today we'll be dealing on Sunday School Lesson number 9 entitled The Censored Mind. Our text is found in Ephesians chapter 4 verses 11 to 18. And the Word of God says in verse 11, And He gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting or maturing of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Verse 14, That we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro, and cared about with every wind of doctrine, by the slight of men, and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. But speaking the truth in love, may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ, from whom the whole body fitly joined together, and compacted by that which every joint supplieth, according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, maketh increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. Verse 17, This I say therefore, and testify in the Lord, that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk, in the vanity of their mind. And the last verse, verse 18, Having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. For a key verse is Romans 12, verse number 2, a common verse, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. In Romans chapter 12, verse number 2, for our lesson objectives, the censored mind. At the conclusion of this lesson, you should, number one, submit to the authority of pastoral leadership. Number two, use God's word as a measuring stick to determine if you are closer to salvation or glorification. Number three, choose to mature in Christ through diligent study of the Bible. And number four, grieve when you do not dispel the darkness in order to walk as children of light. For our lesson outline, item number one, through the gift called gift of called men. Letter A, the church helps build people. Letter B, the congregation has been prepared. Item number two, through the, go the goal of Christ-like maturity. Letter A, the mandated service. And letter B, a measuring stick. Item number three, which will be for next Sunday, through the grieving over corrupted morality. Letter A, the presence of darkness. And letter B, the power of directness. As an introduction, the censored mind. In our modern world of technology, we undeniably need the tool of censorship. We need to put restrictions, this is censorship, to put restrictions on the television, the internet, other forms of media, and the list can go on. We also need to censor something far more valuable and important, our minds. Through the spirit-filled men, the word of God, and a hatred for sin, God shows us how to censor our minds based on the biblical principles found in Ephesians chapter number 4. To continue, our aim is to be wise unto that which is good and simple concerning evil in Romans 16 verse 19. God desires that the Holy Spirit serve as a censor or filter to our minds so that the things of this world are not able to enter. The continual process of filtering makes it possible for us to be wise unto that which is good. How can we have a censored mind? Item number one, 
through the gift of called men. Letter A, the church helps build people. In verse 11, and he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. God lists for us the human gifts for the local church. The twelve apostles were the first to know, verse the first to know to follow Christ in his ministry and went later designated as such because they were eyewitnesses of his life after the resurrection in Acts chapter 1 verse 22. The gift is no longer in existence today because the qualification of being an eyewitness is impossible. Likewise, the prophets as listed here are no longer needed because, of the, because the canon of Scripture is complete. However, the office of the evangelist and pastor or teacher is still very functional and important today in the local church. Those who preach faithfully the church of God's word are given to us as a gift from God to help us have censored minds. Just because you have been disappointed by a preacher, do not throw the baby out with the bath water. What does this mean? What is the meaning of the phrase, do not throw the baby out with the bath water? It means, do not discard something valuable along with something undesirable. Again, it means do not discard something valuable along with something undesirable. The expression was part of everyday German language. The Germans say, you must empty out the bathing tub, but not the baby along with it. It is an idiomatic expression for an avoidable error in which something good is eliminated when trying to get rid of something bad, or in other words, rejecting the favorable along with the unfavorable. Kung sa ato paning inistoryahan, kung nagproblema ta sa uh, mga ilaga sa atong balay, ang atong solusyon, gisunog na to ang balay to, uh, to eradicate of mga rats na apil ang atong balay. So, maon eh. Um, it is an avoidable error in which something good is eliminated when trying to get rid of something bad. Rejecting favorable along with the unfavorable. So, kung panalitan na igu ka sa wali sa pastor or unsa ba ang mensahe na hatag sa ato, kinahalan willing ta mo accept ani. Kay kini, gituyo ni si Gino para kita mahibalan para kita ang atong kaning panghuna-huna masensored mao ni siya through the gift of cold men. Dili ta masilo, dili dayon ta masakit o dili ta mabiya. But we have just to continue on because the church is designed by God and um, one of the ways to censor our minds is through the gift of called men. There may be some hypocrites in the pulpit, just as there are in the pew. But do not let that dissuade. What's the meaning of dissuade? To persuade someone not to do something. Do not let that dissuade you from the truth that comes to you through the preaching of this God called men. We have yet to see anyone who was living a successful Christian life who was not part of a local church where the word of God was being preached faithfully. In the present tense, we can also read this as such. We have yet to see anyone who is living a successful Christian life who is not part of a local church where the word of God is being preached faithfully. Here in Titus chapter 1 verse 3, let us learn this. But has in due time manifested this word through preaching which is committed to me according to the commandment of God our Savior. So every time there is preaching in the, of the word of God in the church, let us be ready and let us be reminded that the word of God is declared, is manifested and given to us through the preaching of the word of God through the pastor or teacher whom God uses. God does not need us to build the church, but we sure need the church to build our lives. God has called men to preach and commanded us to submit to the authority of the truth. Remember this Titus chapter 1 verse number 3. 
Also in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18, For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved it is the power of God. So kinahang ng yun, maminaw kita kanunay sa preaching of the word of God. Kinahalan na ito ng dili ignore o ipalabay. Kinahalan makapaminaw to o kita mapanalanginan sa pulong sa ginoo. Because kung kita luwas, but unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. In Hebrews chapter 7, chapter 13, verse 7, Remember your leaders who spoke, spoke the word of God to you. Consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. Mauningi ingon ni Paul nga, Follow me as I follow Christ. Nindot sundon ang atong pastor, ang atong leader, kung sila po gasunod, gasunod sa ginoo. So na importante nga ato silang i-remember. Ang ato sad sila i-obey. Kung ato sad sila i-imitate. Uh, uh, so, to continue, item number one, through the gift of called men. Letter B, the congregation has been prepared. One day, at the judgment, each preacher will give an account of his faithfulness to preach the truth, and every person who has heard the truth will give an account of his obedience to that word. So, duha ang concern ani, ang preacher o ang mga uh, listeners, ang audience. Doon na tayo nahibalaan yung mga preacher o sahay, dili mo preach against sin. O sahay, dili mo preach against, I mean, preach on giving. Kay ma, kuyawan sila, masilo ang mga mga audience, ang mga believers, ang mga listeners, so hindi na mo balik. But you know what? All preachers and teachers are accountable for what they teach. They have to preach the truth faithfully and to every person who has heard that the truth will give an account of his obedience to that word. In Hebrews chapter 13, verse 17, Have confidence in your leaders and submit to their authority because they keep watch over you you as those who must give an account. Do this so that their work will be a joy, not a burden, for that would be of no benefit to you. So, importante nga magkahiusa ta, maminaw ta, musunod ta, muobay ta, especially kung during the preaching of the Word of God. The congregation has been prepared. How sad it is that many people today find excuses week after week to miss preaching services in their churches and then wonder why their minds are stained with worldly thoughts. In John chapter 15, verse 3, the Word of God says, Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Kanidaing maminaw to sa preaching. That's why the Word of God says, Faith cometh by hearing and hearing. Kanunay, balik-balik. Kaya nga naman, when we hear the word of God through preaching, you will be clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. That's the word of God. John 15, 3 says. So, importante nga maminaw ta, present ta, every time there is a service so that we can be clean through the word of God that has been spoken or that has been preached. Listen to this. The congregation has been prepared. In John 15, 3-5, Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine, no more can ye, except ye abide in me. We know that Jesus Christ is the vine, and we are the branches. In this illustration, diha, ang vine, diha, dunay mga roots, dunay main trunk, unya kita mo mga branches. We cannot bear fruit apart from the vine. So, importante nga mo abide yun da. Ang pag-abide means to stay, to remain. So, that means in your church, you should stay, you should remain and listen to the word of God being preached because this is for our own good. This is how to make the congregation be ready or be prepared. To continue, item number two. Through the goal of Christ-like maturity. Letter A, the mandated service. God wants us to become like Him. If that is going to take place, we must filter out that which does not assist in that goal. Our goal is to mature like the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. In Romans 8.29, For whom He did foreknow, 
he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. The mandated service. In a general sense, there are three stages in God's plan for our lives, for the believers. There is salvation, that's number one, which takes place the moment you put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ. There is a sanctification, that's number two, which begins the moment you get saved and does not end until glorification. Glorification is when we are with the Lord Jesus Christ and then we are like Him. That's the eternal sanctification. This is called glorification. Here's an illustration. Through the goal of Christ-like maturity, first salvation, this is positional. This is referring to sanctification. We are complete in Christ Jesus. Then what takes, pl what takes place is our spiritual growth. It consists about growing, edifying, or building up, and abounding more and more. This is called the progressive sanctification. This is the spiritual growth. And the next step is glorification, which we become perfect. We are eter uh, eternally sanctified. This is eternal sanctification. So this is the spiritual growth and maturity. A mandated service. A past event we trust called justification. A present work in our lives we see called sanctification. A future completion we hope for. This is called glorification. So imagine all our lives are covered in the past, present, and future. Here's another illustration. The court, this is talking about justification, the removal of sin's penalty that, is, that happens when we are saved. The holy place, this is sanctification, the removal of sin's power. Number three, the most holy place, this is glorification, the removal of sin's presence. So, sa kasagaran, kung kita naluwas na, naataan yung gitawag na sanctification, the removal of sin's power. Kung wak pa tamaluwas, kinahanglan. Primero, the court, you should be justified in the eyes of God. And this is the removal of sin's penalty. Kinahanglan, maluwas ta. Kinahanglan, mo-acceptan nga dili ta, makaluwas atong kagilingon, makasasala ato, o dawato na ito, sige nung si Kristo, ingon nga atong personal nga maluluwas. Kay siya ra ang nagpakamatay, gilubong sa katulong adlaw na banhaw para ni kanato. And the most holy place is glorification. When we become perfect, this is the removal of sin's presence. We are already with the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. Through the goal of Christ-like maturity, letter A, the mandated service. If you are a child of God, you are today in the stage of sanctification somewhere between salvation and glorification. Many people just take a few tiny baby steps after they get saved. The distance between them and the world is minimal. Morning pasabot ani nga, kung kita bago palang maluwas, daw sama, duol pa kaita sa kalibutan. Others, because they place their minds under the control of the Spirit of God and His Word, grow by leaps and bounds placing great difference between them and the world. Mausad ni katong ni focus, ni basa, ni ampo, faithful dia sa pagsimba, sa pagpamina sa pulong, sa ginoo, sa pagsunod, o pag-ubay, dako kayong diferensya. So they have grown by leaps and bounds, placing great difference between them and the world. When they die or Jesus comes, their step into glorification will be minimal. For they have already grown to be like Him. Pagkanindot, inaani unta ang goal sa matag Kristuhanon. Nga kita, duol na sa glorification. Dili itong duol ta sa kalibutan. Mauni ang diprensya. The mandated service. Let her be a measuring stick. Using God's word as the measuring stick, are you closer to salvation or glorification? This is a question that each of us can answer. Let us grow up and act our age. Many have been saved for many years and yet still act 
like babes in Christ. Daghan imo maobserbahan ani, bisag dugay na sa simbahan, gibungot na lang, anay bigote, pero mura gihapong babes in Christ nga no man masilo kung maigo sa wali, dili na mobalik, usahay kung di lang makumusta, dili na mabalik. Mauni ang mga gitawag nato babes in Christ. We have to grow. We have to grow up and act our age. No wonder that the world goes on so lost in their sin. They see no difference in those who profess to be different. If God has changed your destiny, then let Him change your demeanor. What is demeanor? Your outward behavior. So that others can see Christ in you. Tili taingon nga, kanibang gitawag nga mga secret agent nga kristohanon kinahanglan ang atong demeanor kaning outward behavior ma-manifested makita so that others can see Jesus Christ in us it is important this is a measuring stick in 1 Peter chapter 2 verses 9 to 12 the word of God says but ye are a chosen generation a royal priesthood and holy nation a peculiar people that you should show forth the praises of Him who hath called you out of darkness into His marvelous light, which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Verse 11, Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts, which war against the soul. Verse 12, having your conversation or manner of life or behavior honest among the Gentiles, that whereas they speak against you as evildoers, they may be by your good works, which they shall behold, glorify God in the day of visitation. Ang gitawag na to nga kanibang promotion or kaning um, kanibitang mag-promotag o sa kaproduct nga gusto na itong ma mahibalan sa uban, mao man eh, nga ato ni siyang i-advertise, atong i-promote. Ang sa Kristohanon na kinabuhi, ang pag-promote sa Kristohanon na kinabuhi, pinaagi sa maayong buhat through good works. Why? When they have seen our good works, they shall behold and glorify God in the day of visitation. Importante ni. And listen to this. In Matthew 5.16 Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. We are the light of the world. Important ni. And also we are the salt of the earth. Kaning light mohatag ni kahayag. Kaning salt mohatag nig preservation kung ama kristohanon wala na diri the wrath of god will be poured upon those who will remain remain so importante nga ikaw <clears throat> luwas ikaw nakadawat ni Ginoo si Kristo nga imong personal nga manluluwas nga inig mo balik si Jesus Christ you will be with him and you will be with him forever and ever remember you are the light of the world and you are the salt of the earth Pour on the salt and turn on the light so that people will see your good works. For our memory verse in Romans chapter 12, verse number 2, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Pangkadindot ang pulon sa ginoo, kaning kabubuton sa ginoo, it is good, it is acceptable. It is perfect. We hope we can memorize this verse in Romans chapter 12, verse number 2. As a summary, the censored mind, kinahanlan dunay restriction para sa atong panghuna-huna. Item number 1, through the gift of called men. Letter A, the church helps build people. Letter B, the congregation has been prepared. Importante ang pastor, importante ang mga leader sa simbahan. Importante ang simbahan because this is the idea, this is the design of God. Imposible nga kita mutubo sa atong kristuhanon nga kinabuhi, nga kita-kita ra. Maubitaw na nga gusto sa ginoo nga, 
we should not forsake the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, another so much the more as you see the day approaching. Importante. Item number two, through the goal of Christ-like maturity. Letter A, the mandated service. Letter B, a measuring stick. How is your reading the Bible? How is your prayer life? Kumusta man ang imong kalawasan? Kung ikaw luwas na, asa man ka dapita karon sa sanctification? Diri ba ka nga duol pa sa salvation or didto na ka duol sa glorification? Through the word of God, you can measure yourself. So importante, makita, we should grow and act our age. We should, you know, mature and become like the Lord Jesus Christ. For item number three, next Sunday, through the grieving over corrupted morality. Letter A, the presence of darkness. Letter B, the power of directness. Kinahanglan doon na tayo restriction on sa'y musod sa atong panghuna-una. The censored mind. So God be the glory that ends the Sunday School lesson for today. God bless us all. Thank you.